go ahead and get started. First, we'll be starting. Just close the door there so we don't get any background noise from the office. With the voting machine, the most important part for the majority of voters, uh, because every single voter who is voting in person would be using one of these machines. And just like most other currently certified systems in New York State, it is an optical scan system. And there's, well, there's not a whole lot you can do with optical scan systems to make them different because they all follow the same process. You get a paper ballot. You fill out a paper ballot, you scan it into the machine, like so. It feeds through the machine a little bit, gives you a nice ding to let you know that your ballot has been successfully cast. You are all set and good to go. However, let's get a bit more into what goes on with this machine specifically. Um, at the beginning of the day, the inspectors would come in, they would take their plug, they would plug the machine in, that would power on the machine, begin election day. Um, from there, your inspectors, your administration staff, and your maintenance staff all have separate passwords that control separate functionality of what you can do on this machine. So your inspectors would only have the ability to open polls at the beginning of the day and close polls at the end of the day. Uh, your actual administrative staff has the ability to perform pre-election logic and accuracy testing and then clear out those results so that they are not showing up on election day because they are strictly test ballots going through to confirm that it is counting the ballot correctly. Um, and your maintenance staff has the ability to go in and uh, back up the logs on the system, um, take those logs, export them out onto a USB stick, uh, and then clear those logs off so that each election you're starting fresh and don't have anything uh, clogging up the works, so to speak. One nice thing about the clear ballot system is it does have a very extensive log system. Not only can you pull them up, um, you can keep a full record of basically everything that has happened throughout the election day uh, through those logs, whether voting started, voting stopped, um, a, a interruption, a jam, anything like that gets included in the log file. Um, so if you ever need to go back and take a look at the election at a previous time, you can find all of that. It also all comes out on one of the more extensive tape reports that we've seen. So at the beginning of the day, just gonna scroll back here from our morning setup, you get your zero report with all of your zeros, 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 zeros for every single contest, every single candidate um, showing up nice on the report. But then not only do you have that, if anything happens throughout the course of the day, and this is a relatively new uh, new feature for New York State, if for whatever reason, at some point during the course of the day, voting was suspended because uh, there was a jam and the election inspectors had to come in and clear the jam, anything like that, there was, there was a fire and you had to move the machines, um, I, I wish that that didn't happen, but we've had it happen. And uh, fortunately, our inspectors know to get those machines out of the building and continue with your election. So you get this nice little voting suspended printout. So anytime that something happens on the machine, your, your system will print a receipt of that. So the inspectors know, so anyone who is auditing the elections know, so the County Board of Elections know something happened Here's what happened. Here's the information. Um, and just getting you that additional information as just a, a, another paper record as to what is going on on your election. Um, as you can see, I've got a lot of these because I've been doing this uh, all day so far. Uh, we've suspended voting a couple of times just to move the machines from the previous demo room where we were doing our in-person demo up here to our web-based demo room. Um, 
So I've got a nice long tape, just like your inspectors would at the end of the night that they would then be sending back to uh, your county or city board of elections because that is part of the election record. Um, I'm go ahead and just for reference, I will overvote a ballot that is voting for multiple contestants, uh, or more accurately, voting for more contestants than allowable in a specific contest, because you can have a multi-choice contest uh, where you are selecting a vote for two, vote for three, vote for four. In this case, I am doing it on a vote for one. I am selecting vote for two. As you can see, I selected John Adams and Ben Franklin. For New York State law, I do get this pop up saying, hey, you have overvoted. I do have the option to return the ballot. I do have the option to submit the ballot. It simply will not count either of those votes. It will say this contest had an overvote. Um, I am going to submit it because for whatever reason, I don't care about that contest or because I think that my choice is valid. <laughs> uh, as you can see, uh, right on the screen here down at the bottom, uh, we do have our public counter for the election um, cards and ballots cards in this case are referring to if you ever had a situation where you would be having a uh, a multi page ballot cards is referring to um, individual numbers um, ballots there would be referring to total ballots cast. Um, but you do have that public counter. Um, in, in any case, if it's a if it's a single page election, which is what most elections are, uh, that counter would be the same. It's only in uh, elections where you do have those multiple pages where those counters would be different based on how voters submitted. There is also a private counter. Um, I know that there has been some discussion in some uh, voting rights groups about how the private counter uh, should be visible. The private counter can be pulled up by the election inspectors at any time to be shown to a poll watcher, but it doesn't show up on the main screen. Once you cast your ballot, it drops from the scanner into this compartment here. And on election day, there would be uh, inspector seals here and here and here. Um, so both sealing the lever um, and sealing the uh, compartment so that you can tell if there's any tampering. It is also protected by a key. I don't have any of those seals on because I am going to be opening it up for you. And we weren't going to get into the cutting of those seals. Uh, as part of this demonstration. So I insert my key, I turn my key, I open my compartment, and you'll see this big gray box. I am gonna pull it out so I can show you. And all the ballots that we have just cast have fallen into this big gray box. So at the end of the night, your election inspectors would open up the machine, pull the box out, always screw this one up, seal it up, seal it up, send it right back to your Board of Elections, whether it's the County Board of Elections or the New York City Board of Elections in a nice secure, secure container, um, going back nice, easily portable as well. Um, so that all of those ballots at the end of the night can go back to a secure location. Close this back up. It helps if I don't leave the key in. And then as an inspector, I'm sealing this back up, all set and good to go. Uh, I will note that like all machines in New York State, this has a two hour minimum battery backup. Uh, quite frankly, it probably uh, goes uh, 
longer than that. Um, uh, yeah, we've we've detached it multiple times today uh, and just had it running, um, and we've lost about two percent battery power over the multiple times of moving it around the building. Uh, I do have a question from Kathleen Collins. How is a person with a wheelchair and foot pedals to be able to vote? I do not see any room for someone's feet to go under. Um, so the wheelchair would pull up here and go there. Um, that is not where, uh, or let me rephrase that, because I believe you are just talking about person in a wheelchair uh, with the foot pedals on the wheelchair. So they would pull up here and they have the space to just insert the ballot there um, as, as designed. Um, there is no space under there, just like there is currently no space under either of the other machines. It's, it's designed to be at wheelchair height, so you pull up to it. Now, for filling out the ballot, the, the, the ballot accessibility booths um, do have space under there because you pull in under there. Here, you're just pulling up, inserting the ballot, and going. Moving on, the other component to election day is the, sorry, it's a little warm in here, I'm just choking a bit, is the ballot marking devices. We have these two here. They are effectively the same. Um, the only difference is one uses uh, one commercial thermal printer and one uses one commercial uh, laser printer. The actual marking device is exactly the same. It's simply how the ballot prints out. Um, on the laser printer, it, it, it's a little bit slower on the laser, honestly, uh, even, even so about itself admits to that. Um, it, and it, it pops out. Uh, thermal's a little bit faster. Um, however, we do know that some folks have raised concern about the, the quality of the thermal paper. Um, These are all ballots that I have printed from various uh, ballot marking devices, both the thermal and the laser. It's easier to show in person, but you cannot tell the difference between a laser printed ballot and a thermal printed ballot without significant inspection. Um, we have had the thermal paper ballots for over two years. We have seen that they do stay and keep their ink and keep their form um, because we know that some folks have raised concerns about that. Um, yeah. All in all, uh, we and more importantly, our, our testing partners at the federal level are satisfied that the thermal paper meets all the ballot storage requirements uh, for the lifetime of the ballot. Getting into the BMD themselves. Voter has a couple of options. Um, we're going to start with just our default. So, going to pull up a Hueville ballot. I can select English or Spanish. I can change my zoom to large or extra large. I'm going to change it back to default. I can switch to white on black, black on white, yellow on black, low contrast. Um, I can set up sound or screen only. Um, I'm going to volume up as far as I can. And we are going to start with our ballot. Going to turn on here. So, as the voter, 
I can just go through, make my selections. And you'll notice that it does pop up that reminder for if you have undervoted the ballot. Oh. Before I print my ballot, I have the option to review my ballot. It gives me warnings that I have undervoted some of these contests. Um, I can just go ahead and print it. That's the touch screen. While it is very nice, it is not really what the ballot marking device is, is getting into. You have the full functionality, anyone can use it. It pops out my ballot there. I'm all set and good to go. Just like anyone else. My ballot feeds through. However, there are also additional options. This is their ATI. So a voter comes in, an inspector starts the session. Voter takes the ATI and selects their choices. We have a, a, we're trying to use a speaker. I don't know how well the audio is coming through, uh, but what it really comes with is a set of noise canceling headphones. Only the voter is hearing the choices. Um, it is plugged in to the ATI here and just stays there all day. Uh, if the voter needs to use it. Headphones are there. Um, so from there, the voter can just see if I can volume up it. This is not a very good speaker. We are still searching for the best way to have the audio from a machine that is really not designed to have audio be broadcast because that defeats the purpose of having the audio. It's supposed to be private. Um, we're still searching for a good way to broadcast that audio for these demos. Um, but for those who cannot hear it, it is giving you audio instructions. Uh, I am using my controller. to go through make my selections and if i was an audio only voter this can be set to audio only it just defeats the purpose for the purposes of the demo I got a question of how long the ATI cord goes um, extended out fully. I can get it about the full length of my wingspan. Um, and this is this machine is also at a bit of an angle. Um, so if I had it straight um, or straight off to a side table, um, I, I could probably extend out a bit more.
continuing just all on the ATI. And it gives me the summary both as uh, a visual display. And as I go through, it gives me an audio summary as well. I fully voted this ballot, so it's not giving me any warnings. Um, the uh, an undervoted ballot, like it has those warnings when I undervoted when I was using the touch screen. Those undervoted warnings also show up as uh, part of the um, part of part of the ballot printing process. So I got a. request to describe each of the buttons on the ATI. Um, so, and there are braille controls along with each of this. If you can sort of see where I'm running my thumb there, those bumps, that is braille. But in the upper left-hand corner, you have your volume up and volume down errors. From there, you have your help button. So if you uh, need any additional information, want to go over the controls again, anything like that, that's the help button. Um, if you want to redo the audio, you have the audio button. Then you have the, uh, the directional arrows. So up, down, left, right. And up, down, left, right are really how you navigate around uh, the The, uh, the choices, the contests, all of that, um, that's all through the, the ATI buttons, um, through the directional buttons. And then you have your big green selection button that is, uh, that is your, um, and I should say, your big circular green selection button because the circular portion is more important than the uh, green portion. Um, and that's your your select your deselect uh so yes i do apologize uh i should as kathleen is putting in the chat um so the the volume buttons are up and down arrows they have uh nubs on the arrow side uh the help button is a six-sided uh button it has nubs on all six sides, but it also has an elevated question mark right on the button as well. Um, the audio button is a square button. It also has, uh, along with the elevated uh, square on the outside, an elevated pause and an elevated play. Um, so an elevated arrow uh, facing to the right and uh, two elevated lines. The directional buttons have uh, elevated nubs in their uh, their master direction, I guess we'll say. Um, so the up button has an elevated nub arrow that points up. The down button has an elevated nub that points down. And then uh, left and right, uh, elevated nubs that point left and right. Um, the As we said, uh, the circle. So you have the elevated nub around the outside and then it sort of depresses in so when you put a, a thumb there, you can feel as you rest the thumb because your thumb sort of drops into the circle. You can you can feel the circle around the outside if your thumb is resting in the depressed portion. I will note that unlike some other systems, uh,
apologies about that. I'm going to have to check and see what's causing this because the last ballot went through just fine. Um, how heavy is the ATI? Um, I do not have the exact number off the top of my head. I can get it because I do know that its weight is listed in the accessibility study. Um, I just don't know it off the top of my head. I do apologize. Um, it is not heavy. It is very lightweight. I Honestly, the, the little speaker that I've been using to try and get the audio across is probably heavier than the ATI itself. Uh -oh. The last, or I, sorry, more notes. Another note from the ATI uh, is along with audio, it has the capability to anything with an input jack should be able to, um, so it, it would, I have a question in the chat, how does it feel like an iPhone? Um, honestly, I think it's lighter than my phone. It's a bit more, I, I guess I should actually say a bit less glossy than most uh, modern technology exteriors. Um, if there's, if there's a, a degree of texture to the outside of it. Um, so you know where, where you're holding, where, where a corner is, um, all of that. Uh, not, it, I'm not going to say it's non-slip, but it, it's it's certainly less slippery than my my work iPhone or my personal cell phone. Um, so, pull something out here, quick. Apologize for the dead air. Uh, you also have the option of using a sip and puff machine. Um, so I'm going to preface this a bit. I am using one of their default sip and puffs. Um, it's, uh, it's made by an accessibility company. Um, they're made as um, add-ons to the sip and puff. Um, a bit like that. It is not calibrated um, because it's sort of designed as a generic sip and puff. Well, if you are a user of a sip and puff, it is very likely that you have a calibrated sip and puff. You have the capability of taking your calibrated sip and puff and jacking it into this sip and puff machine, um, and you will get better results than I will get with this sip and puff. I'm still going to go through and do a ballot, um, but your ease of use um, with a calibrated system should be should be much more accurate than me trying to go through with a non-calibrated system. Um, so I am going to make mista some mistakes. I am going to try and go through a full ballot with the sip and puff. Um, you're going to have some dead air as I go through it before I print it out. Um, so I apologize, um, and you will see me occasionally make some mistakes and need to stop and catch my breath. Um, but let's go ahead. So the inspector. Initialize the session and then steps away. And this, through the instructions, uses a series of um, long sips, long puffs, short sips, short puffs, and uh, double puffs and double sips. Uh, 
though. Hold up my options because I'm blowing too much. So Kathleen, it does vary uh, based and it gives you instructions based on uh, which step you're on. So um, for example, when I pull up the second screen, it should be a double puff to return to voting. There we go. So double puff should move you forward. Uh, double sips should generally move you back. Um, puff should move you forward within a screen. Um, sips should move you backwards within a screen. Long sips take you back to uh, the settings and functionality. Um, Long puff to select. Oh, oh.
So going back to uh, Kathleen's questions about which puffs. So because I've undervoted this contest, I'm getting special audio and visual instructions on how to continue voting or go back to complete voting. I'm just going to move forward with my double puff like it's telling me. Here, I'm going to pass my ballot. I'm printing my ballot. And again, gives me instructions on how to print my ballot because that is a separate long talk. So I do also have the option to contact a poll worker if I need additional assistance. I'm going to cancel out of here because I didn't actually need a poll worker. And I have, just through using the sip and puff, a fully voted ballot. So that is pretty much everything you're going. Um, hey, Kathleen, uh, I believe I touched on this briefly at the beginning, but yes, absolutely. Someone can use their own sip and puff headset. Um, it, there is both an input jack as well as a USB. No, don't be sorry. It's a good question. It's a valid question. Um, just want to make sure that we're covering it. Um, uh, but yes, uh, there's both the Sip and Puff input jack on the Sip and Puff itself, as well as if they have just a, a full USB one, there is a, a USB input as well. A um, couple of other a couple of other options for inputting your own Sip and Puff, or um, if you have your own like paddle set or anything like that, those also have some connection options to connect to the ATI or the Sip and Puff if you have a if you have a custom set. So that's a pretty much election day um, because you've got your voting machine, you've got your ballot marking device, everything is all set. And then at the end of the night, the poll workers 
are going to come over. Cancel printing. They're going to close the polls. Again, uh, just like the zero tape, the results tape comes out. I'm going to cancel that printing just because I want to. Um, so from there, I am going to shut down my machine. And as the poll workers, they're going to, again, key lock and the poll worker password to shut it down. So double security. Um, and there will be a, a tamper evidence seal here as well, a harpoon seal. Um, and open it up. Open it up. And here I have my USB drive, and that's my result. So I am going to take my USB drive. I'm going to return it to either the county or city board of elections um, so that those results can be processed on election night. Um, a good question, Kathleen. None of these machines are connected to the internet. More importantly, none of these machines can connect to the internet. One of the New York State requirements that has been tested extensively by our testing partner um, is a, not only can you not be connected to the internet, you cannot have the capability of connecting to the internet. So, so no modems, no, no nothing like that. Um, so I take this USB, I bring it back to my board of elections, load it into the central system. The central system is not part of this demo. It's a, um, again, going back to not connected to the internet it is an air gapped server uh, along with some uh, interface uh, uh, PCs that are connected to that air gapped server. Those PCs are also air gapped. Um, and I'm going to read the results in, and then you as voters get the results that you see from the Board of Elections on election night, consolidating all of that. Notably, like all other machines in New York State, I pulled out one USB. There is a second USB in there um, acting as a backup. So even if you have a failure on one, you do have a backup. You also always have your paper record of your paper ballots which 3% of any machines in a given county or in the case of the city of New York in the city of New York are audited for any given election on a random basis um, to confirm it that it does check out to that paper record. Just gonna put that USB back in because I need to continue using it. And because I need the key back. Um, so that's election night. So yeah, there, there's a question there. Many are saying that we hack. I am not going to say that uh, if you had, you know, physical access and a bunch of time that you could get in and mess with the software that runs the machine, but you would need physical access. You would need to break those tamper evidence seals that are all over the machine. You would need uh, passwords and you would need uh, significant amounts of time. So it's, it's not, it's not a, it's an impossibility. It's that there are uh, significant safeguards um, and more importantly, safeguards in depth. So if you, if you defeat one, there's another. And if you defeat one, there's another. Um, so, so that you, combine them all to, uh, they're greater than the sum of their parts. Um, the last thing I want to cover just real quick, because that's election night, but many voters in New York state do vote by absentee ballots. Um, and especially with the changes to the law where absentee ballots are counted before election day, those can no longer be counted by hand because those results need to be suppressed. Um, so, uh, this is the portion that Clear Ballot has already been doing in New York State. Um, they already have a certified central count system for Dominion and ESNS. 
um, which is currently undergoing a minor modification from uh, clear count 2.2 to clear count 2.2.5. Um, but they'll also be using it as part of uh, clear count 2.4 um, to count their own absentee ballots. Now, um, the catch is that you know, going back to that server that I mentioned, that air gap server, um, Clear Ballot Central Count System really does need to be connected to that server. So I can't show you all of that through here because it's a very large server. It, it, it wouldn't fit to set it up in this room. Um, and it's not exactly designed to be easy to shut down and start back up and uh, move from place to place. It's not designed for that. It's not supposed to do that. But I can move the scanner that it uses. I can move the terminal. So I am, you know, John Q. Public. Uh, I have submitted my absentee. Um, John Smith at XYZ County Board of Elections uh, with his bipartisan teammate is going through the absentee ballot counting process. They are going to come to their clear count system set up with the server. They're going to... I'm going to click on this, but I can't even run it because it's not currently connected to the server. Um, so it's just going to tell me that I failed. But I'm going to start my scanner program. I'm going to have my batch of absentee ballots. I'm going to take my target card, put it in my, it's a uh, Fujitsu FI 7800 scanner. It is a commercial off the shelf scanner. Um, uh, again, uh, air gap, it's only ever been connected to that central system. And I'm just going to go ahead and scan my ballots. Uh, my target card scans through, I scan my ballots through, and then I have these suppressed results that if you have configured it uh, according to New York State specifications, um, the, the team that is scanning in those absentee ballots should honestly need a higher level of security uh, to then go ahead and actually look at the results. Um, so, uh, there is a question about the rocker paddle. There is not a, a direct integrated rocker paddle. There is strictly a input jack in the ATI where someone with a rocker paddle can jack their rocker paddle into it. Um, so no, you did not miss the use of a rocker paddle because as part of the uh, BMD system for sale, there is no rocker paddle. There is simply the capability to connect a rocker paddle to it. Um, so, um, again, scan your absentees through. Uh, it's suppressed until election night. And then on election night, I take my results, take it from the count server, take it to the results server, um, and I am loading it in along with all of the results coming from those sticks that are coming back from the election day machines. Um, that is pretty much it for our demonstration. If anyone... Uh, has any questions, feel free to email election ops. Uh, so elections underscore ops at elections.ny.gov. Um, uh, thank you to our, both of our ASL interpreters, as well as my lovely Campbell person, uh, Melissa, who has been the one, you know, getting you all these up close shots so you can get better views and all of that. Say hi, Melissa. Um, thank you all for coming out today. Have a great rest of the day, and I hope you all have a great weekend. Thank you.